this felt it's ridiculous. Hello and welcome to the Blue Room live blog. It, this is a live forum where 25 Perth theatre artists have been invited to share their view on live arts and theatre in Perth. Tonight's blogger is Gita Bazaar. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I represent a company called The Duck House, which is a brand new company made up of um, six girls who um, we all went to university together and we've been together for a year now. Uh, we did our first show here at the Blue Room 10 months ago, which was the Oresteer, and since then we've done another one at the Recobites, and we have our third show coming up in March here. Um, just a bit of a plug for you all out there <laughs> in cyber world. Um, we came together as a group after we finished university because we had a desire to create a really sustainable um, company which didn't just want to do a show at the Blue Room and then go off and do all these other projects and never come back together as a group. Um, although we do branch out into other things, but we really wanted to create a group that understood each other and had a common performance language where we, we didn't have to start every process with relearning everybody's strengths and weaknesses and we could create the sort of theatre that we were really, really passionate about, devised, contemporary, physical, humorous, really entertaining theatre and build on that with every show and build on our skills and our ability to work together as a group. Um, one of the things that we have found uh, in our year of being part of the Perth theatre community is that it's so supportive. We came in and nobody knew who we were and it really felt like we had to prove ourselves. But at the same time, everyone really, really wanted us to succeed. And I think that's really a really important part of the Perth theatre community is that everyone helps you out so much and even when there are competitive things and you have to you have to go on audition against your friends and you know you have seasons running at the same time and you're competing for audiences. I've never ever felt like anyone sort of has this thing where they want you to fail. Everyone we, we just really want everyone to succeed and we want everyone to have enough audiences and we want nobody likes to see each other fail. And so having that support has made a huge difference and having as a really young company, having other young companies who've come before us, who've sort of been role models for how it can work, companies like Weeping Spoon and um, Mythophobic Productions, who you know used to go and steal their funding applications and rip them off, and, and, and then to sort of older artists who come and see our shows and stay and chat afterwards and honestly tell us the things that we can improve on and, and the things they really liked and disliked about our shows. The fact that you can, you, you just walk around the cultural centre in Perth and you constantly, constantly run into people you know. It's such a tight community and I really, really like that about it. Just rambling now. Um, <laughs> um, but despite this, uh, this wanting everyone to succeed, Tim was talking about how we don't, we don't necessarily celebrate our work after it's done and we don't we have this Perth complex where we don't think that what we've done is good enough. And I went to Edinburgh recently to the Fringe Festival and like Tim said, I saw the worst theatre I have ever seen in my entire life. In larger quantities as well. I reckon I saw more bad shows in three weeks than I've seen in two years in Perth. It was ridiculous. Um, I also saw amazing things as well. Um, but I think we... We have this idea that because we're isolated, somehow we're isolated from good judgement, which is just not true. And because, I think it's because it's so expensive for us to go overseas and we have to put so much time and effort into the funding applications and probably quite a lot of our own investment that we have much more of a fear of failing. Um, that because so much of it has been invested, if we're not really at the at the top of it, we're just, it's not going to be worth it and we really fear that it's not going to be worth it. But having, having been to the Edinburgh Fringe, I think that most things I see around Perth, we really should travel overseas more and we should be more courageous 
in believing that what we make in Perth is really quality theatre. Not all of the time, but a lot of the time. And I think, I think that we should, we should definitely expand our, our touring, um, which just as a side note today, um, four people from Perth found out that they're going to the New York Fringe, which uh, is more than have ever been selected from Perth or possibly even from Australia to go to the New York Fringe at one time. So that's an amazing achievement um, that I think everyone uh, should be very proud of and support those guys. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, oh, my, my big, uh, one of my gripes with um, Perth is, is the lack of rehearsal space. I think that uh, we have the Blue Room and that's great and if you remember it's free. But other than that, it's really, really hard to get a place where you don't have to pay. And when you're a poor, struggling artist, even small amounts of money can be really quite draining. I saw a company in Edinburgh um, that made this amazing devised theatre piece that I just, I just fell in love with. And I talked to the director afterwards and she was saying they've been working on it for two years and they work on all their shows for two years before they, before they show them. And, and work on them as in two years in the room, not 18 months of writing, but two years in the room, devising and working on them um, before that they show them. And this was the first show they'd done with funding. So they'd done all their previous shows with that amount of rehearsal without funding. And I just kind of went, oh, I really, really wish that we could work on our shows for that length of time. And we, as a group, we constantly talk about how we wish we had more time and, and we could just we could just have so much more time to play and to give space and not have these deadlines of two months of rehearsals and then you've got a show going up and it's, it's really panicky and stressful. And at the moment, one of, one of the reasons we don't do that is because we don't think that we can find somewhere that would let us rehearse for two years without a product. We, we, um, I don't know if the Blue Room would be happy with us monopolising their rehearsal space for two years without uh, having a show going up. They might be. I might try that. Um, <laughs> but I, it would just be so great if, if we could have more access to rooms that we could use like under, under the auspice of other companies that would let us just have their space because you know, even if, even if somewhere did give us the space for that amount of time, I'm sure there are heaps of other young companies that would love to do that too, and we can't all be fighting for those spaces all of the time. So that's my, my big want in the Perth theatre scene. Um, that's about all I have to say. So thank you very much for listening, and uh, see you later.